I've published 20 novels in 20 years and I'm often asked how did I first get into writing and I have to really cast my mind back because 20 years ago is obviously a long time ago and yet it also seems like a seconds ago. Um, I didn't know anybody in publishing, I didn't know any authors, none of my family were writers. Um, I come from the northeast of England, my dad worked for uh, ICI, my mum had jobs around the family, you know, we weren't that kind of writery family. Um, so I initially started in advertising and worked as a management consultant and did other jobs before I became a writer, but I always wanted to be a writer and was um, scribbling throughout. And I say scribbling and I'm certain that people who are wanting to write who are watching this will totally understand what I mean. You'll have a notebook, you'll make notes, you'll write things, you might even sit at your laptop, but you're probably not telling people you want to be a novelist because it's it's scary and embarrassing and difficult to say. Um, but eventually I decided I could never be a published novelist unless I finally told somebody. Um, and I started taking myself seriously by committing time to my project of writing a novel, which was three hours um, a night, three times a week and five hours at a weekend, which actually is a, is a serious chunk of time in your 20s. I missed out on lots of drinking and lots of socialising, but it was worth it. Um, I then researched via a very old fashioned analogue method of reading a book called The Writers and Artists Handbook, which is an annual book still around now that lists all the um, agents, publishers at all in the UK that you could possibly approach if you have a novel or even a non-fiction idea or short stories or poetry. It's the Bible. So I researched uh, a number of agents in that book and came across an uh, agency called Curtis Brown and particularly an agent called Johnny Geller, who by coincidence, a friend of mine had sent an article uh, to me about Johnny Geller saying, this man looks as though he could be your friend. By which I think she means um, he didn't look scary and of course before you're published everybody in publishing seems scary in your mind. You think it's very much of them and us which of course it's not. You've all got the same goal of producing really great books and publishing really great books but before you're published you don't believe that at all. You believe it's of them and us and so my friend was very much trying to say um, you know don't be scared go for it. She also sent me another note saying uh, ships are safe in harbour, but, but built to sail seas, by which I think she meant this manuscript she had read really needed to be read by other people. So on the eve of my 30th birthday, I left the first three chapters of my manuscript um, and a small pitch on the desk of Johnny Geller. And the small pitch was really small. It was a 10 word elevator pitch, which is not to be recommended. Generally speaking, you're meant to sort of write at least a paragraph, maybe a page explaining what your book's about and who your target audience are, is. Um, but I didn't do that. I took a gamble and I sent him a 10 word pitch, which was uh, for this book called Playing Away. And the pitch was Anna Karenina meets Bridget Jones, but heroin gets to live. Now, spoiler, if you haven't read Anna Karenina, she dies. Um, I obviously wasn't saying I was uh, Tolstoy by bringing Bridget Jones in there. I was saying that I was in that whole movement, that whole genre, um, but my book was about an affair. Johnny read the manuscript and two months later, we had um, the amazing experience of the book going to six publishing houses and all six making an offer and there was a bidding war, um, which to this day was possibly the most exciting or one of the most exciting things uh, of my life. It's just unbelievable, an utter dream come true.